My what? Those. Oh. My daughter Madeline and I attended to the American Chestnut Foundation annual meeting of the Massachusetts and Rhode Island chapters at um, Smith's Field Station in the Fleish. And um, learned a lot and we got to tour the Fleish, which was very cool. We got to see the the um, the seed the seed uh, what do they call it? Seed orchard that they're doing there with uh, the chestnut trees. And got to meet a lot of interesting people and I, I think us being part of this project is a very cool thing. And um, I actually wrote an article for the, their, um, their magazine, which goes out to, I don't know, maybe 10,000 people. And it got accepted. So there'll be a feature about our, um, about, if the focus is on the Bridge Street Cemetery because that's, that was the, the tie-in with my daughter and the used to live against the cemetery. So anyway, that's kind of cool. Other than that, I don't have anything to report. So, when does that come out? That how often are there circulations? I think maybe quarterly. Quarterly. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll I'll forward if there's a PDF version. Uh -huh. I'll forward it to you. I'm, I'm actually not a member of the American Chestnut Foundation because it costs like a gajillion mm -hmm. dollars to be a member. <laughs> <laughs> so I I think I'll get the electronic copy. <laughs> um, All right, Rich. Um, so a couple of things. So uh, the, the time of year again for us to apply for our Tree City USA status and Girls Awards. So I'll be working with Terry this month to get that submitted before the 31st. Um, just for op op speak operational issues, we're really just concentrating uh, on actually finishing grinding all the rest of the stumps uh, that we have from this past year. So I don't have a tally as to how many trees we removed, uh, but it's probably going to be over, probably over a hundred. Pretty, pretty, pretty close to it. I have some other trees that National Grid took down that I have to add to that. Uh, I'm also working on a uh, National Grid's uh, hazard tree mitigation program. They go around once a year and they actually they look at feeder lines that come out of substations, and they request that uh, public shade trees and private trees uh, be removed based upon their visual assessment. It's something I think that I think the J does something that's similar. Um, but it's so I have a list on my desk of hundred and twenty trees that they want to cut down. Well, do, they, do they base it on the tree being 
especially in just in the wrong place or its condition? Well, supposedly they base it on its condition, but my experience in the past with them is that they are really just looking to clear cut the feeder roof. Right. That's what it's for substation. So I have to, I've pushed back a few times uh, because I just haven't been able to get to actually go out there and physically determine, you know, A, are the trees, first of all, public shade trees, and second of all, um, what is their condition? So that is a project that I'm presently starting to work on. So I hope, yes. A couple of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, what is what what is a feeder root? Uh, it would be, uh, for example, a feeder root would be in the center of Florence. Where like a main line? Yep, that's where their power comes out of their substation. So okay. it runs up Spring Street, Main Street, and Leeds. Uh -huh. um, so that's... So Everything they, else feeds off of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the other, the other question is, when you say 120 tree removals, some of which are public shade trees, others of which are, pri are private. So, so we don't have that breakdown. I don't. Uh, he has a breakdown for me, but he's telling me 108 are, are uh, city trees and 20 some odd are private trees. But uh, it's kind of hard for me to. I have to go on the field. There's just no way to do it via a map, just because the layout of Spring Street is. It, uh, it changes as okay. Street travels right. along. Is that a new project? Why are they now saying that no, we have to No, they do it every year. They cut that many every year? Well, they try to. Wow. Yeah. So, so if they're public shade trees and they're not deemed hazard trees by your view, then they are, they're subject to Mass General Law 87, That's right? correct. Tree hearing. I won't even give them a tree hearing. Oh, you'll just say no? No, I tell them not. It's got to it's uh, be trimmed. It's got to be trimmed. Yep. Oh, okay, okay. So great. what I do is I just, that's why I look at every single tree, determine whether or not they're public shade trees first. If they're private shade trees, I don't have any jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the trees that are private, or he, the gentleman felt were private, he has homeowners uh, approval to remove the trees. Um, when they did this last time, we went up Ryan Road uh, from Florence substation and down Birds Bay Road. And they did identify some trees that were truly hazards that, sh that should have been removed that weren't necessarily captured. This was done before we had the tree inventory, so they weren't captured, I didn't know about them, so that was good. But they also identified trees that were public shade trees that were healthy, in my opinion, and just needed a real, you know, either to be raised up or a tree cleaned, you know, some dead wood. But didn't represent a, what I would consider a, a, a risk for falling into the utility wires. So I mean, they like to, to the, they like to remove trees that are across the street from the utility wires. They just basically like to clear cut it yeah, all. Yeah. So they overburden you with a list. So basically, they overwhelm you and they think you're just going to roll over. And that's I'm sorry, I don't operate that way. So I think they would have done that. They sent a new guy out this time. He's a different guy. So he's a nice guy, he's, but he's got a boss, and the boss tells him what to do. And so I'm just saying, I'll, I'll get to it. So. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, do you remember? Um, there, there was a tree hearing once on Elm Street for that Chinese elm that's really close, to, is across from the yep. museum. Yep. And that, I think that, is that a feeder route as well? Yep. Okay. Um, and and the, the the conclusion of the hearing was the tree was not to be removed. And, and so if it's a tree like that, which is very close to the wire and does have branches over the wire, um, would you consider that a tree that would stay? Yeah. The trees like that. Our, our, our second time around, they already asked me if they, we could cut that tree down because they're building an addition on the St. John's Church mm -hmm. and they need to have uh, three phase power to run the uh -huh. And I, they asked me about cutting it down. I said, forget it. Don't even bother asking. Mm -hmm. to figure wow. it, make some Hendrix cable, do something different. You guys have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. And so okay. they figured it out. They set new poles and they're going to put okay. um, either Hendrix cable up there or they're going to change their cross arm configuration. Okay, good. So, so, so what train is that? Is it in front of St. John's Church? It's across the street. Oh, across the street. Yeah, St. John. It's a Chinese. Chinese elm. It's yeah. very, it's very tall, and mm -hmm. it only spreads at the very top. Yeah. Not, not dramatically. Oh. oh, it looks a little bit like an American elm. Yeah, could be. Ish. I mean, it's very distinctive. Yeah. So that this, these, these, this group of folks that work for National Grid actually work. I believe for Davy Resource Group, so they're contracted. They work out of a different location, and they are not, it's not the same arborist that I deal with for National Grid locally here in Haydenville, uh, which is Lance Wade. So, you know, we get a lot of extra services from National Grid when we run into situations where there's hazard trees that are beyond our support, for example, Forbes Library. 
you know, I convinced National Grid to help us take that down because mm -hmm. they have mm -hmm. Hendrix Cable, <coughs> big three phase uh, feeder route that comes from the substation on West Street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I don't mind haggling with National Grid, but mm -hmm. I also, you know, there has to be a little, uh, you know, uh, push and pull in a sense. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, tell the line, tell the line. So, um, so that so then there's no so that's going to take me a little bit. There's no other, there's no public shade tree hearing request scheduled. Um, I'm doing a few site plan reviews, uh, but I think really other than that. Um, Are you still marching your way through um, updating? Yeah, I kind of stopped because I got I had to focus on a few other things, but I'm have all my papers and I hope to get those done so we can have some kind of presentation in, in January. Do that so you'll have a well, and it's also just helpful for this subcommittee. Yes, I, I understand that. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. And one other thing that's kind of been on your list, and I'd be curious to know if, if it got discussed when you had your meeting with the mayor. And I know part of that meeting, well, we'll talk about under the agenda item planting guide, yep. but um, the legacy tree burning. Uh, the, the mayor uh, is fine with planting the tree, he would like you to reach out to Ned's family though to make sure that they're still interested in doing okay. this um, and it would be something that would be done between the commission and Ned's family. Okay, so I have the green light. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it would probably be in the spring. Okay. Yeah, I, I would think so. I think the ground's probably going to be frozen by the end of the next week. The uh, they're talking about. Not to mention, do you even have a tree? Uh, yeah, we have um, Burr or the Burrow. The Burrow. Yeah. I mean, oh, we, the we, weather's been surprising us. So, do we want to stay flexible? I don't, not on that tree, but we can plant instead. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm starting to think starts. with the holidays. Yeah. It, spring, spring would be fine. Okay. So and I'm then maybe to... we could, you know, we could, you know, we have the burr oaks, and they actually uh, like prefer to be planted in the springtime. They, right. they do, they do better. Yes. In the spring. So we can put just use them because we don't have a home for those at the moment. And this and this is fair, fairly close to the Bridge Street Elementary School, right? Yes. It's in, it's in so Lampert Park. In the front of Lampert Park, yeah. yeah. Um, but then the mayor also suggested that we should probably uh, try to address uh, memorial tree planting guidelines. We should have some kind of guidelines in place that we can review. Um, and I'm also thinking it would be good, especially if we're going to end up having uh, 25 to 30 trees come from um, the Liberty Tree Program, mm -hmm. because that would be considered a memorial tree with an actual person's name attached to it with a tag on it. So it might be good to maybe this yeah. during the winter months kind of mm -hmm. draft policy that we could get there if possible. Well, later on on the agenda, you're going to see I have this concept of a legacy tree program yep. that came out from me sitting at lunch with someone across the table at the Chestnut Foundation meeting who is on a tree commission and they have a legacy tree program. Anyway, okay. that, so like that kind of Perfect. dovetails. Okay. Did you want to say something? No, I'll wait till Okay. So that's, uh, that's about it. Do you have anything else? Do you have any questions? Last pruning workshop is, uh, well, you'll probably go over that, but last pruning workshop at Village Hill tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, prune quite a few, I don't know how many trees, probably 20, 25 maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least that. Really. So, it's been very, very successful. It's been pretty awesome, actually. A lot yeah. of participants. Yes. So yeah. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. Just a moment of gratitude that we have a tree board that looks through the list that is purposely too big yeah. uh, to wear you out. So yeah. thank you for doing that every time mm -hmm. that. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Jen. You're the bearer of bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I typed this up and my home computer doesn't print on both sides, so sorry about that. Um, so I was looking at the landscape message, which is an electronic newsletter for green industry professionals to <coughs> look at it. And there was a note in there that um, they found a new site for EAB in, uh, it said, Hampshire County, Northampton, and East Hampton. Oh. So I contacted the uh, 
extension entomology specialist and um, she sent me an email with a bunch of embedded links um, about webinars and fact sheets and latest update on controls and stuff that was very helpful that if anybody wants to have I can forward it to you. Um, she said most of the options, I'll get into more of the control stuff in a, in a minute, but most of the options for controls are um, systemic insecticides, which means they are taken up into the tree. Um, most are um, neonicotinoids, which um, aren't, uh, you know, super great for pollinators. However, ash trees are wind pollinated, so it's not as much of a risk um, because <coughs> Insects aren't using to pollinate, but there is some other options. Um, there was, uh, she mentioned that one of the active ingredients from the new tree, I don't, I have to look into that, I don't really, uh, I don't have time. Um, she also was willing to connect us with uh, City Arborist of Cambridge, who um, they've done a big community program about EAB, have a web page, it's pretty good. She also CC, uh, CC'd on my return email to Nicole Kelleher, who's a forestry assistant for DCR, and she gave me like really concrete information. So that what the, they had DCR foresters doing um, checks in the um, floodplain of the Connecticut River um, last month, and they found infested trees in Bachelor Brook Conservation Area in South Hadley and in Acadia Wildlife Sanctuary. So uh, they were scouting and um, they saw suspect trees. They took a bark knife and sliced down and saw the larva inside. So um, what her email said is that um, green ash trees are most um, preferred, but given the, this is a direct quote, green ash trees are more readily invaded with EAB, but with population densities discovered, it is likely that upland white ash or other ornamental ash, including fringe tree, uh, in in these communities, meaning East Hampton, Northampton, could be infested at low levels. So the chance um, that is already on some of the trees is um, a possibility. Um, DCR is currently planning on additional trapping at these sites and others on the Connecticut River in 2018. They're also considering uh, biocontrol releases at those locations, but they have to get approval from landowners and from USDA and APHIS because it's a federally, it involves the feds um, and how many spring trapping results they get. What is the biocontrol? Um, there are several. There's, uh, I think, at least four that have been, um, uh, went through approval. Um, mostly they look at them for, um, forested areas because it's impractical to apply pesticides <clears throat> in forested areas. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head, but I... Predatory insects. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like, what I was asking. Most of them are wasps. Kind of wasps. Yeah, most of them are wasps. Mm -hmm. How effective is that? Uh, I'm not quite sure, mm -hmm. but um, I haven't, I didn't, this was like, oh my God, I saw this two days ago. I was like, yeah. Lily, I think we got to talk about this. So I can um, do a little more research. Yeah, the problem with that is got to have a big enough population to support the predators. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. if you don't, then the predators don't build up a big enough population to right. Right. do what they're supposed to right. do. So. But it sounds like it is a high population density. Is that what she was implying? Yeah. Well, I don't know what high means. That was the, um, she, I, did, I wanted to have this discussion and then I was going to get back to her with questions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what she specifically recommended was that um, we have a tree inventory, which we already do. Um, and she uh, offered uh, communities to do their own trap monitoring. She'll get us up to six free traps and um, we'll come and demonstrate how to use, tr do training. You may already know how to do that. Um, she suggested setting up uh, ash tree, you know, in our ash tree general health monitoring so that you would have people trained to kind of on the trees um, because we are we have trees that are within 15 miles of a site um, of a of the site of um, where they found them um, 
that is kind of the cutoff point to where preventative pesticides are suggested to be used. Mm -hmm. So that is a possibility. Um, this is the latest, she referred me to this and also the other person, this is the latest um, information on all the options of, um, I can pass this around and again, if anybody, I like to have this downloaded if somebody wants me to send it to them. And then I also have this guy that can, um, particularly homeowners can decide. There are products that homeowners can use themselves. Um, anything that we would do would have to be if we chose to do that. And she recommended one uh, particular uh, trunk injection, but I, like I didn't have time. You might know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time. There's another one that's uh, Right. So I mean, they do. Information on that. They do um, are going to plan on um, EAB workshops for 2018, and she would be willing to come and do a specific work community workshop if we wanted that to happen um a public event or something like that um in the winter times the best for them this is the extension service no saying. this is the um this is the uh dcr oh this is dcr yeah uh nicole keller okay. uh, yeah I was she the one that was at our uh that gave the presentation of Pests and so forth at our at the tree warden. Uh, I don't. Uh, it was Tawny. Tawny, Tawny is is UMass Extension yeah, entomologist. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just a few other kind of factoids. I think people should kind of know about just from my kind of did a little gathering information. Uh, some communities are labeling ash trees. I think at one point you got. So, um, you know, people can, and there's a um, website, Neighbors Against Bad Bugs, which I didn't, I didn't get a chance to look at. There are online calculators available to just help you decide whether to, um, whether pest control is, um, that takes into account the benefits of the tree, you know, including CO2 and stormwater mitigation and that kind of stuff. Um, how to Purdue. Um, talked about the 15 um, preventative pesticide treatments have been found to be effective they work if um, but if you have a tree with more than 30 percent canopy death which is what happens the canopy starts to die um, it should it's, it's not worth it um, that happens pretty quickly once yeah. I get in there right, right. is that that the first sign we'll we'll see is walking in the street can it be dying or is there some other thing to look Usually for? you see the top starting to die first. Oh. That's, so, that's our first clue. Yeah. Sometimes there'll be like, um, the some of the bark will look a little lighter because woodpeckers will be looking for that so they like poke off the bark. It's called blonding. Mm -hmm. They blonding. strip off the outer oh, bark. Yeah. Yeah. I see like a layer of the inner bark. Mm -hmm. So we can't ship in some more probably in the woodpeckers. No, you know, we, we could try. Maybe we could try. We could try. Um, so what Jay was saying, um, when EAB population is high, small trees can die in one to two years. Large tree can die in three to four. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't really know, like, you know, how high is hot. Like, you know, I don't really know. I, I've got to get back in touch with her about that. And then I just included, um, there's a bunch of detection methods that they've used, um, traps sometimes, visual surveys. Um, sometimes they'll girdle an ash tree and then um, attract them to come there. And then um, you know they'll see, they'll cut it down. And they also do biosurveillance, I think. Molly, you were talking about that one time. Where you oh, look yeah. for these uh, native yeah. wasps at like yeah. dirt roads and uh, you look for their holes in the ground and right and they have the little beetle parts mm -hmm. and they found yeah. some other towns have found. Um, but one other thing um, we should just know understand about uh, EAB pest outbreak anyway is um, you know just like human disease pest outbreaks have like a like a mm -hmm. life cycle like yeah yeah. So with EAB, um, 
the populations change over time. So initially, the populations kind of build slowly, um, and it increases as more trees are infected, which makes sense. Um, when the population peaks, um, most of the untreated ash trees will die in three to five years. So once the local untreated ash trees are dead, then your population is going to go down. Mm -hmm. And over time, the surviving ash trees, if they have been treated, you may or you mm -hmm. might be able to reduce your treatments because mm -hmm. there's just been out there. And if, yeah, and if the, um, just from my own personal experience with biological control, that like sometimes, um, you know, biological control is kind of good at like ongoing, low, it doesn't, it's not great at knocking down some huge explosive problem. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, if we, if the biological control is put in and if it works, then, um, that may be a kind of a longer term solution. You do have a native wasp predator. Right. And that's what they use, that's what they monitor to look for the insect. Well, thank you, Jen. I could tell that that was effort with your throat the way it is. So I appreciate you giving that presentation and more importantly, doing all the research and bringing this to our attention. Um, I feel like as a commission, it, uh, we require some sort of public response. I think that if there's a press release in order, um, because I, you know, we have, I think our tree inventory demonstrated something like 4% of our tree population. Okay, so I think we, we're, we're at a crossroads where we need to ask ourselves some questions pretty, pretty quickly. And that is, are there any specimens that we feel that is worth to investing mm. the preventive or treatment in, and if so, we, you know, like time is of the essence. So that would be require an inventory search of trees of maybe a certain diameter mm -hmm. or something like that, or in a certain location where they have maximum public benefit. Um, I would certainly love to not see every single last one of our ash trees go, which is what will happen mm. if we do nothing. Um, so, and um, you mentioned Cambridge, so I, when I took my tree stewards training maybe three years ago, or four maybe now, David Lefcourt, who was then the tree warden, he probably still is, of Cambridge, gave a presentation on their, um, they have an aggressive preventive program there. They, they inject yearly, they have, a, they have a, made it a priority to have a budget for treatment. So um, he would be a resource because he's got years of experience now. I imagine DCR would be, you know, would also be uh, a resource, you know, because every time this hits a new community, I'm sure people turn to them and say, okay, what do I do now? And so um, because they've been spotted in Arcadia, uh, do you know what the folks there are planning? I, I didn't, um, it's not really up to them, kind of, because it's a federal, I mean, the feds are involved, you know, so it kind of is up to them, but not really, right? Do they believe in them, <laughs> <laughs> The feds, oh. No such thing. <laughs> I think, I don't know who actually runs, is it a private organization? Yeah, it's a private nonprofit. Yeah, I, I assume that they have full control yeah, of their own. Yeah, there are some that have to follow the regulations mm -hmm. for the treatment. Yeah. Well, was this one of the first <coughs> identifications of infestation in the general area? Hampshire County. Yeah. It's a new, it's a yeah. new, as of 2017, it's new. Yeah. And um, it's the first in Hampshire County. I'm surprised they haven't sent out a press release to, to the local papers. Uh, either the extension service or the It's like a month old. I don't know if they're trying to figure out what the... What it was like randomly. I don't remember. It was In like, the Gazette? I'm not sure. Lincoln Public Radio did a story on it. Yeah, that, that's oh, they I posted it on the Tree Northampton website. Yeah. Oh. So this is not... When a report came, came out. Um, no, a month ago or less? A month old. Oh, yeah. I did not know this. This is totally new to me. Does this um, create any kind of quarantine? Or is there already a quarantine? Already quarantine? Statewide quarantine? Yeah. yeah. 
Well, if we were, if we were going to bring in someone to do like a workshop or whatever, you would work with me separately to broaden the reach of that more super regional. Oh, you mean because of uh, HCOG? Yeah. Okay. Well, because this is already out, and I didn't realize it was, I don't think that there's any need for an immediate press release because it sounds like it's out. Although I'm surprised because that didn't pick it up. Um, or at least I didn't notice it. Yeah, I, did, I did. I'm wrong. I did definitely have an NPR. I thought it's a. That's right. Already. I didn't see it. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, wh where do we want to go here, folks? Well, what about the. Um, trap monitoring, is that something we could get involved with? Or the general health monitoring? Or, or yeah. would Tree Northampton yeah, I think want we should to do request, that? Or? We should probably request those free traps and then spend the winter identifying where the best location is for them. I'm having a hard time understanding what the value in that is. Here, I mean, my understanding is that EAB causes 100% mortality untreated. And we're only going to be able to treat, if any, a fraction of the trees that exist in our... The trapping might give you a better idea where to, where to start. I mean, but... You want to, you've got a little time to work out from where they are. Mm -hmm. Well, that's presuming that that's the only place that they exist. You know, that they yeah. were just detected there. Well, I think the theory is they're coming up the Connecticut River. From mm -hmm. Connecticut. Right, I mean, Green Ash are the ones that grow on the floodplain. Oh, okay, so that's why. I'm saying the area closest to the river and Arcadia would be that we concentrate. But the first step is, I agree, to decide if there are any trees that we actually want to protect because uh, we're not going to protect most of them. I think we know that. And there, but there may be, especially like in the cemetery or somewhere, it's been a, you know, a, a big 30, 40 inch yeah. is, I don't know. I, I don't see them on the street. No, no, they, 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 They've been dying for yeah. a long yeah. time. There's a few big ones on Sylvester Road that have to come down that mm -hmm. have died, but not from mm -hmm. Emerald Ash War. So my, my, feel, my feeling is, without obviously knowing, that I don't see big, amazing ash trees, which, some of which are in Cambridge and I remember growing up with. It yeah. was astounding. Mm -hmm. I think they grew up on Ash Street. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's aware of the ash trees. Mm -hmm. And I don't see it here, but I, I, I think it's worth like using the search tool, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. though Especially I suspect the ones we're really interested in, if they exist, might be in parks or in um, cemeteries, just because ash trees have been stressed for so long that the street ones are probably pretty exhausted. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you're very comfortable with my tree keeper. Do you yeah, want to do a, a search? I will look for ones that seem especially yeah. either by their location or size or a combination. Right. Okay. Um, important, and then maybe just um, work with Rich to see if he can think of any places for me to look. In the right. And can you think of any in Child's Park or anything like that, Jay? You know Child's Park pretty much. They can be like just these yeah. amazing. There might be some in Look Park. In Look Park, yes. Hmm. Uh, I think that's very possible. Don't, don't know. I mean, at least put it on these folks' radar if they're not. Yeah, well, I mean, if they exist, then we can at least, uh, or at least, you know, right, put it on other people's radar yeah. if they're not our trees. I mean, it's worth kind of. The Smith Folk uh, Hospital Which Hill one? area. The Smith Folk Hospital Hill area. Yeah, Hospital I think, Hill. I think there's some that are down by there. They have there. some magnificent trees there. Yeah. I mean, so far, I, I, I see these trees and oak mm. trees, but... We could just notify those organizations that own a lot of land mm -hmm. to let them know that they might want to do something about it. Well, I think if we're going to end up having some kind of training, I think that would be the time that we would mm -hmm. we're gonna do it. Have a training here, specific to Northampton, that would be the time to right. bring all the stakeholders mm -hmm. to the table that own large tracts of land in the city. Or so even homeowners a, too. Well, it could be anyone, but mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I think that treating public shade trees and pretty treating private trees are two different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, just I think for our, personally, it would be nice for me. I'd like to know whether there's some amazing trees mm -hmm. that we want to mm -hmm. say or not. None come to mind for you, Rich? Not off the top of my head, and I'm actually looking uh, to trying to scan here just quickly to see what the DBH of some of these trees are. Mm. Uh, 
Well, uh, does someone is someone interested in taking a leadership role in this? I am going to demur on this one personally. I, I, I'm I feel like I'm just looking for the, for the trees. You're you're interested in looking for the trees. And then that will kind of predicate what the next step is because there aren't any identified. Well, uh, not necessarily. I mean, we could still go ahead if if free training is being offered, and all it, it involves is us finding a location and promoting it then what's the harm in that because there might be nice specimens on private land or you know so if someone is interested in going down that track and and helping to organize a training i fully support you i but i won't be that person well people might be more interested if there are trees that were that we as public and mm -hmm. okay well i i support i totally support you willing ones. to help Organized training. When, what would the time frame be? Good. I mean, I mean certainly in the 2018. <laughs> she said yeah. winter was uh, a good this. Time. Yeah, winter. I'm. Yeah, I'm happy to kind of be part of it. I just don't want to be the head person. Yeah. Okay, I'd be happy to work. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things about the training is it ultimately leads to having you do something. Yeah, and the something <laughs> is not necessarily. Well, it's it. It may it, just but, be getting the information out to the right. public. But the something might be for people who can afford it and have an ash tree, even if it's not a huge ash tree. It might be I want I want to pay to have preventive measures taken on that ash tree. So that's where just the training, who knows, will right. And that's the nicotinoids. And so do we want to be promoting that? Well, there are other options. Mm -hmm. There are the yeah. name that are mm -hmm. less toxic. To Supposedly, I again, David that. Lefcourt would be an excellent resource for that. I think it's a value, a value to have a community conversation that's thoughtful and looking at where the ash trees fit in the eco ecology of our community mm -hmm. and just so people know that we're, people thought about it and yeah. cared enough mm -hmm. to come together and learn about it and then weigh whether using these compounds is a good thing mm -hmm. or what else can resources go to that would perhaps benefit the community more. Great. All right. Well, it sounds like I heard three of you, Jay, Jen, mm -hmm. and Sue, would be happy to work on that. And Rob, well, and gonna, Rob is going to. I'm going to look for ash trees. Yeah. Right, you know, and use the map, look around, talk to people. Maybe ask Ed. Yes, definitely. He you knows know. the park trees, all of them. I know. Mm -hmm. So do we want to get together? Okay. Talk about it. Yeah. Do you want, and by the way, Rich has in his office those tracks. If you want to grab those resources. Yeah, the identification piece of the traps. I don't have the traps, I have the tags that that tell folks that this is an ash tree subject to Emerald Ash War. We got them from the state. Oh, okay. All right. I don't have the traps at the moment. So I think that would be after Rob IDs. Yep. you know where they are and stuff if there's ones that are particularly yeah i mean i, I was not going to know where each and every tree is but i can walk talk ask look at the map and just kind of you know my, the ones i observed are always about 12 inches yeah well, there's very few there's 131 inch on chesterfield road that's in poor condition that they mm -hmm. suspected had emerald ash war huh? hmm. um, oh. back then another 25 inch one that I think is on uh, Audubon Road. There is a native boar that it, it is looks, also devastating. Yep. Uh -huh. It looks, it has a, a, a D-shaped exit hole that looks the same, but it's oh. not huh. It's not the same size. Wow. So huh. both that's the, what's happened to all the ash trees on Sylvester Road that have to be cut down oh. by Zawala Sugar Shack. Oh. There's a lot of large ashes over there, but they all have to be removed. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Uh, it's by Zawalik's on Sylvester Road, right before um, the uh, Red Hen Red Hen Winery. Kind of near the reservoir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, there's 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 quite a few, but for some particular for some reason, I don't know why we didn't plant a lot of ash trees. As I mean, we have a total identified as 335. It was one area in which your negligence served us well. <laughs> it wasn't my, I, 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 I Not your personal, I but the city. I can't plant. The only ash trees <laughs> I planted are at uh, Ellerbrook Field on Berkeley Road. I did plant ash trees there.
but other than that, I didn't plant any in the street. Yeah. So I guess I did something right for change. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. All right, um, I think I'm ready to move on from this subject. If folks feel like it's wrapped up, you guys will talk together afterwards. Thank you. Do you want me to, does anybody have questions they want me to ask the person I came up with, like the DCR? The DCR person is really, she was like, you know, boots on the ground person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you, can they email you questions? Yep. <laughs> Good. All right, traffic calming manual. Uh, so after the last meeting, I just wrote up uh, kind of in this format uh, the comments that we had looked at and discussed at the last meeting. And I guess this could be reformatted and finalized and submitted to the um, traffic comment commission. So should we take a moment to just read this? Sure. Okay. So wait, um, point number two. Fourth is spelled F-O-D. That's true. I'll go for it. <laughs> <coughs> I did not check this out. <clears throat> I think um, point four. Uh, narrowing the real or apparent instead of of apparent. Yes. Do you see that? Um, eight, uh, third line, as that condition has no bearing on the success. So 11 in general, the current plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. I, this is pretty much everything we discussed last time. reach out to Ryan O'Donnell and see if, it, if, if you want a place on the agenda or you just want to go for public comment. I have no idea. I've never been to one there. If you go public comment, they cannot respond to him. So if he's placed on the agenda, it's better. Mm -hmm. Just saying. I've you staff it, right? I used to. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you got the inside. I did the inside. Um, Don, our director, is there and then uh, another clerk in the admin office.
Okay, okay so I'm gonna, I would like to reach out to Ryan O'Donnell. Okay. Since I had a conversation with him and I am the chair, so it looks like, like it's official, and I'll CC you and I'll CC Rich. Yeah. And I'll request that you, that I'll, 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 I mean, we could submit these ahead of time via email and say, we plan to present these to the full committee on the 19th and we respectfully request place on the agenda to do so. And should, since we uh, advise the mayor, should we send these to the mayor as well? Which is not email. No, I can get you with this. If you want these, this information inserted into the traffic common manual, it should basically come out of DPW. But their recommendations from the pre commission. They are, but DPW writes the whole draft. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that's got a little perplexing because Maggie Chan is the one that actually uh, reworked the traffic common manual. She's the traffic engineer. Uh -huh. So my suggestion would be to include, to send it to Ryan like you suggested, but include Donna as well, who's the director. Can you, can you forward me her email? Sure. Unless, unless you already have. I may have, but I I'll, I'll forward it to you, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, just in terms of public process, it seems like we should, uh, I hear you mm -hmm. saying that she's the one that actually physically drafts the manual, mm -hmm. but it seems like this needs to go through the normal channels of no, it, it does, but you need to include Donna as well, okay. because Donna's right. going to be the one that's going to be instrumental in getting it it's basically But drafted. she just takes her running orders from the TPC, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, well, okay. yes and no, but yes. All right. Basically, that's typically what happens. They send it to Ryan, and then they'll vote on to ask D, uh, Donna, uh, the to DPW, to review it. To review it. Yeah. So that's typically how it works. Yeah. But she, you sent it to Donna prior, so she's aware of it. Okay. Before she no. gets there. Okay. So I will do that ASAP. Um, Just I'm actually going to keep bird dogging Ryan until I get a response. Um, yay or nay that you're going to be on the agenda? Because I've just gotten silence from him. They might not meet in December. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, the next one then. Yeah reach out to them for, for December, but uh -huh. in past history, they they have it. Okay. When I was on there, so it could have changed. It's been a year. Okay. Sounds good. Um, do uh, Does anybody have any comments about these? Because we are going to, in a moment, make this official and empower Todd to... <coughs> I thought they were really good, and um, I'm just surprised that somehow or other the first draft, the first now in course version didn't include any of it, which is very surprising to me, given mm -hmm. so it shows you that we're here for a purpose. Yeah, and I feel like what Todd has brought into it goes beyond the scope of just trees, right. um, which, hey, we've got a planner on our tree commission, mm -hmm. you yes. know, mm -hmm. bonus. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of that because I think the whole issue of narrowing streets goes to the heart of tra the traffic calming and until we can narrow streets, we're, we're spinning our wheels. So go get them, Todd. Thanks. This is narrowing streets physically and visually. Yeah, and exactly. And the part that we can really do is, of course, the yeah. Lots of trees. Okay. Um, shall we take an official vote on this? All right, yes, we'll make it official. Terry, I love the nodding. You're, you're right there with us. All right, would someone like to make a motion? I move that we adopt the language that Todd is putting up. I second. Discussion? I'd just like to clarify that we are recommending this to. Um, the Transportation Parking Commission for um, integration into their most updated traffic manual. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. <coughs> Thank you, Todd, for working on that. Sure. That's a big deal. All right. Yeah. Good, we're a little ahead of time, so that means that we can um, say, uh, discuss some things that maybe Molly would not have otherwise had time to be part of. Okay, planting guidelines, mayor's feedback. So the feedback was positive. Um, the mayor would like to see 
a uh, couple of changes on the cover. You would like to have the city seal on the cover yeah. to make it uh, an official looking document and he would like to get rid of the word recommended. Hmm. Okay. He would like to be, this is the planting guideline in accordance with the uh, tree warden and public shade tree commission for the city of Northampton. And that's in the title, right? Yes. So we'll just remove the word back yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the seal on there before, and then when we were sprucing up the, front, the cover page, it got popped oh. off. So apologies for that. And then he, was there a discussion about who would lead submitting the document to be incorporated into necessary regulations and ordinance? His office? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, once you make those recommended changes, and I also, are those uh, requesting changes, I also told them that the back end of the document will, will be added to because I'm hoping to, I'm gonna work with Alicia to put some um, tree protection guidelines and some, you know, to go along with the planting guidelines as a whole package. So when, you know, you give this package to a, um, a planner, whether, I mean, a, a developer, whether it's by either electronically or, uh, you know, in hand, they have all that information is what's expected of them it's going to save me a lot of trouble um, from having to go out and meet I still will have to do it I would imagine but it's going to save me the trouble of bringing three different documents that show three different types of tree protection and you know everything's going to be in one good in one okay. document so he was he was fine with that I'm going to meet with Alicia tomorrow to go over the recommended changes on the cover because I want to make this thing happen uh, so we can actually at least get that document out there without the appendices in the back. And then Alicia and I are going to work on putting um, the appendices together and put <coughs> tree protection language that will be an adopted policy, sort of like the whole document itself. So the whole thing will be adopted, and here you go. He doesn't see an issue with uh, the planning department incorporating that into their uh, framework or the scope of their work. So. The ordinance they will have to be looked at because that that will have to be addressed. But he was pretty sure that we weren't going to have to go in front of city council. Well, you will to change that. I think it's the commercial something overlay district has a tree list that's yes. going to have to get wiped out yes. in place with that yep. language. And then subdivision rules and rights will have to be the planning commission can vote on that right. separately. So it's just going to be for the commercial district and anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah. So we'll have to have uh, we'll have to work on that but I mean it's a step in the right definitely a step in the right direction okay great so that's going to be on your to-do list your content I did I already we're meeting tomorrow night okay. Okay. so correct it's right. a two-sentence ordinance change though it's yeah you know, it's replace and you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. and we'll, once it's all complete we'll be able to get a copy like you need. yeah it'll be electronic it'll be on our website um, and then I'll just make as many copies as people need okay so awesome. And then we'll just, you know, continue to, uh, you know, adjust it. He was really impressed by the, he really liked the fact that it was very easy to use. Good. You know, so I, I, I think it's great just to make those three changes on the cover. The other thing that I asked him about, which is not addressed in here, is about my reappointment. And he said I did not need to be reappointed. One of the issues is that um, Governor Weld in 96 passed it, had a law passed, or signed a law bill into law to have a tree wardens reappointed every three years, but that doesn't apply to Northampton because I was appointed uh, by executive order. Mm -hmm. So there's no statute uh, limit, there are no, it's like a limitless term. Mm -hmm. um, even once there's regime change? Uh, the tree warden serves at the pleasure of the mayor. Okay, so the next mayor would need to reappoint you. He would basically not have to reappoint me as long as the administrative order stayed in place. I see. Okay. The next mayor would just say that yes, you can continue to be a I tree warden, or I'll okay. pick Todd Ford. I see. Those <laughs> are vicious rumors. <laughs> so that was the little thing that was, uh, was addressed. Okay. So good. Yeah. So the feedback was uh, feedback was positive all, all around. And that's that's really about it. So I'm just going to work on that, and then I'll. Uh, once I have uh, Alicia's done with everything, I'll probably send out um, a draft of the of the, the additions of the appendices in the back, so you all can take a look at it and then question, you know, your comments, questions. Okay. All right. Yep. 
All right, next item on the agenda is the planting plan subcommittee. Uh, we have not met since we last met. We, since our commission has lost, last met, we are meeting tomorrow evening. I think um, Sue, maybe not. I will try, try, but okay. um, yeah. well, can't promise. You see there, you there, all the better or not next time. Um, what would be helpful, I think, in our, because we're doing sort of short, medium, and long-term planning, attempting it anyway, would be to know what our line in the sand deadline is for 2018, for, for you to make 2018 um, uh, lists that you need to put out to nurseries. Uh, Rob and I like to have a list put together usually by February. February? Yeah. Okay. February, early March. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the later it is, the less likely you are. Right. Yeah. No, but that's the whole point of this, yep. is to try to get first in line. So we're going to just shoot for February 1st. Yep. Okay. And then I still have to do a little research on my end about doing a multi-year, once with this plan is in place, doing a multi-year contract with uh, some kind of a contract with Amherst where we can actually have uh, John buy the uh, different nursery stock that's not normally available and grow it for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm, exactly. still, I'm still looking into that. Right, that's well. the medium and long term. Right. So yeah, it's going to be very hard to do large scale projects without doing that because the, for him to have like yeah. 40 of something. Yeah, right. right. That just sitting there without PCR coming in. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like we're going and just collecting the different loose pieces. Scraps. Yeah. yeah. So the goal is to like pre-order. To go and say, yeah. Uh, we want you to grow plan. this for us. Yeah. yeah. So that in three years we cool. can we can you know redo whatever. No, we the stock quite a lot because what's happening is we're buying the stock before it's fully developed in a restructure. Right. Because if we don't, then someone else will buy the stock before we do. So it, so it's not just getting the freezer one; it's getting better. Okay, um, so then the other thing is, are we still shooting for 250 trees in 2018? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to end up around 230 okay. or something. And the third question is, we still don't have any, um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a cl clear running orders regarding setback trees. So we do. What are our running orders? Go. Approved. <laughs> Proceed. With so is it the sort of with the new language? The new language. Uh, it, with, with, form. Uh, with the new with the, with so the new we form. Have a new yep. Form? yep, we have a new form made. Alan Sewell made the form, and then I'm going to record in the registry of deeds. Okay. All right. Okay, I want to ask record about them in the registry of deeds. Uh, when, when there's when you make the contract, then yep. people sign a contract, and then that contract will be recorded. Hmm. But didn't you say that it costs a ridiculous amount? Seventy-five dollars. Mm. Her tree, okay. Mm -hmm. All, All right, so that means that Rob, you being the, the front person to this, you're the one that's describing. I'm, I'm gonna this have, I'm gonna, he, he is, but I'm gonna have to go with him because it has to be notarized. Mm. So, well, well, I mean, just practically, that would mean that I, I would go and discuss it with them. And if they wanted the tree, then I would come in. Then we would go back with my seal. Because it on. usually works that way anyway. People usually the first yeah. time around, they don't. They want to think, you know, think about it. So. Oh. Drop some blood on there, wax seal. <laughs> yep. I can put your fingers in there, squeeze it with the clamp. <laughs> yep. So is there still, uh, I missed the last meeting, but is there still um, any uh, planning or thinking on Tree Northampton to, on part, to take over the setback? Well, I mean, to the extent that people don't maybe want to sign the new contract or aren't interested in it, then uh, Tree Northampton is slowly developing, you know, a source of trees, and we're we've got our little tree garden where mm -hmm. we're growing trees, and uh, we've got a donation button on our, you know, so mm -hmm. on our website, so we might have some money, we might have some trees. We don't have the trees, we don't have the money, right. but. Mm -hmm. But that could be a future. It'd be a matter of scaling up yes. Tree Northampton right. in those ways. Right. I yeah. think it also remains to be seen how receptive people are to this new 
contract they're going to sign. And if they're super receptive, then that sort of answers that question. And if they're like, forget it, then we may need to be creative. Right. So everyone should just expect that this upcoming spring there'll be some finding out of things. Yeah. In other words, it's not going to be like we go and we just do it. It's rich that he needs to go there. You know that? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. All right. Rich needs to go. Oh, I see. Just say, you know, just. Yeah. In your free time. In his, well, in his free time. You know, it's, the good thing is that actually going and seeing the sites has a benefit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like go with Rich, so it, that's good. I mean, it's good, and we have very, you know, his, his time is precious. And so I'm conscious of also how I feel like this just pulls you into the weeds in a way that is. Bye, Molly. Bye, Molly. Um, Bye. Anyway, all to be unfolded, and all, we'll see how it goes. All to be figured out. Yeah? Does the landowner pay the 75 bucks? No. The city does. Yep. Wow. That's nuts. Yeah, I mean, I, I, city well, resources. I think I think it's important to treat our Hampton just hear what you're saying and, and not disagree and be thinking about how to get trees. Tree North Hampton, so that we don't have an alternative way of supplying trees. Other than the city. Purchase. How much do these trees cost per tree, usually? The ones we've been planting. On average, probably $180. 100, I think. 150, 180. 140. So but if it takes a half an hour of your time, every time to go to every single tree, notarize it, stop time hour. to take it to the more room than half today. an hour. I mean, wow. hard to get yeah, in I mean, it's going to cost more money than the tree's worth. I, way more. I mean, way more. So I, I just think that we need to be um, sort of severe about the cost benefit of the current plan and, and, not, and not be attached to anything. Okay. Except for getting the most trees in the ground in the most efficient and cost-effective way. I have a question. What happens if the tree dies? Is there a responsibility on the on so part see, of the homeowner to, according to the law, contact someone? or? Well, the law says that the tree is a public shade tree, so that means that the city would be responsible. So they'll be entered into the inventory. And then if the homeowner, yeah, if the tree dies, we, we go and remove it, we cut it down. <clears throat> and that's carried forward in the, the deed of the then property. You would need another filing of some sort, or uh, would you plant another tree in I would that probably spot? just plant another tree, yeah. because that, file would, that filing would always be there. So one of the things that might happen is that um, Amazing. in some way or another, the very high value spots, like downtown in front of the church right next door to us here, there, whatever it takes. I mean, I could see. Right, right, sure. Like Academy Music, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. An hour of Rich's time, two yeah, hours, yeah, yeah, yeah. a few hundred bucks a city. But, you know, I we also plant trees out on sort of ruralish roads in Florence. So we're gonna, and we've tried not to have a system of, um, well, we, the system's been anybody. I mean, we haven't, we haven't had to have priorities you know, prioritization in terms of fairness, because everybody that wants to gets one, so that, you know, they'll, they'll get, it could get more complicated. So it's, it's going to get more complicated. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that pretty much wraps up that. We'll have more to report next week, hopefully, um, from the subcommittee. Legacy Tree Program, this is just a very introductory, um, agenda item I put on and that was I spoke to somebody whose community does not have a memorial tree program they have a legacy tree program which means that they can they can plant a tree somebody can donate um, to have for the cost of the tree and the cost of a plaque for a person who is living or dead so you're not you're not um, narrowing yourself to just dead people <laughs> Which to me seems brilliant, yeah. because you can also honor people who, uh, you know, for whatever reason have been um, contributors in society, in the community, or even just, um, you know, has a soft pace, place in somebody's heart. And so I just thought that if we're gonna, if we're gonna create a program like this, we might as well broaden it as much as possible. 
to make it attractive to the most number of people. So I just wanted to um, present that broader scope. Are they Thoughts? virtual prep plaques or, or actual plaques? You, like you know, there are numbers of ways you can go about this. The, you know, I was talking to someone who lives in New Salem, population like 900 or something like that, or maybe a little bit bigger. And they're doing actual plaques. But I was just in New York City, and I, um, I saw tags on new trees that had um, Q codes and um, so you, we could do any whatever we wanted. I think Yuko is kind of cool. I, I like the little tags just in terms of how to affix them. It's, you know, it's just a little band with a little mm -hmm. aluminum tag. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, <coughs> it costs something, but it also can have information on it. It could say date, species. Yeah, you, you can, can have the basic, but then if you want to learn more about the tree, you stick mm -hmm. your, your phone up to it. Right, and, and, and that too. Because, I mean, I, I think clearly none of us want something like a plaque on the ground. You know, we, know, we all know we don't want... Of that. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. We don't want that. But, yeah. but, but the cost of, and energy of putting a, a little tag the way Smith does seems to have... I was, I was just looking at my notes because we talked about this about a year and a half yes, ago. And right. um, I had done some investigation looking at Belmont's program, Cambridge, Lexington, mm -hmm. and then one in uh, Connecticut. I'd be happy to work on this as a project. Pick okay, up, and I also want to just throw another thing is in, in, in that, in that my daughter, you know, my daughter is a is a tree nerd, um, and she's becoming more and more um, interested in focusing on trees, and um, she is actually meeting tomorrow with, um, not tomorrow Friday, with folks at Smith that she's done a temp garden internship there about the the idea of extending Smith's tagging into Northampton. Um, because one of the things she most likes about Smith College compared to any other college campus she's been to is that it's an arboretum. So anytime she walks through the campus, she can look at a tree and learn about the tree. And um, she thought, well, why not extend that into greater Northampton? So she was, it was just gonna explore that idea with, um, with Gabby and John Berryhill as a point of introduction and then if they like the idea she was going to come and present that as a possibility to the tree commission as a, a student a student project that she would offer so anyway some of these things could be blended together um, or or not but there there's potential crossover that's a great idea and the veterans tagging and too, the veterans which, tagging. Which, yeah. and would that would be an adequate way of tagging their trees they're actually going to use a dog. They're going to use a dog tag. It's very similar. These have aluminum tags. Yep, it's similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took a picture of one in, in New York City. I don't know if it's on my phone. But anyway, so that I mean, initial reactions to the idea of expanding what we conceived of as a memorial tree program to a legacy tree program makes sense. The name legacy tree is used for other purposes too, but you know. Um, oh, how is it? Like there's a, a big part of, you know, what I've been thinking about legacy trees are trees that will survive the warming climate. So the University, the Chicago Botanical Garden has now, they have the thing in the legacy oh, trees. These are trees that will weather. And they're, they're actually doing some rigorous study as to which those trees are. So I, I, I go to that. Yeah. It's unfortunately, their climate is different though, so it's hard to hard to extrapolate mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to keep track of what they're calling. Well, I, pass this around. I found the tags that I I took a picture of the tags in New York City. They're nice, durable tags. Really? You can, if you click, you can see the other side of the. So yeah, the Chicago Botanical Garden really important concept that they're promoting because they rate them like for these, the thirty-five things. years. Oh, and, and, you know, oh I see. Oh, I time see. Well, you know, we could come up with our own name. Well, if okay. legacy is confusing. Maybe. Maybe. I just think legacy is going to be a really big term. Yeah. Coming up. But. Yeah. Might be all right. Can um, you describe how, how this goes around the tree? It, it just actually very loosely, probably with something like a, um, 
zip tie. A zip tie uh -huh. just loosely goes around a branch, mm -hmm. like the lowest branch. Yeah. And, and you can see it's got, I don't know if that one shows the QR code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. So the, the QR code is an interesting thing just because it gives you a, a central digital place exactly. for this to live. The, the other option that you <coughs> think about is if we had, um, if you're doing like a building fundraiser, or you have the plaque and then you add to the, the plaque as donors give, we could have some sort of tree-shaped plaque or something in this building or another public building mm -hmm. that in order to, to have a legacy tree you have to send so much money and then you get onto that tree that populates oh, uh -huh, over time uh -huh. yes and they're all over the place i just sent you all a, just a basic form of the information from uh, um city of dublin dublin ohio as a legacy tree program yeah so that they yeah. just pump a bunch them up online and there's all kinds of exactly yes that's what the woman told me yeah. to do. She said, just Google it because it's interesting. we're it's just very copying. It's very simple, actually. It's not very complicated. Yeah. What are your goals, like the benefits of having a legacy tree program? To raise money to get more trees or to involve people in I it? I think both. I think, I don't know that are I would rate goals? one of those higher than the other. I think um, education, oh, if we definitely do tagging, it's education, awareness, uh, and sense of community building. You know, people feel like, People are, there are people behind those trees. And then also just to populate the tree and, and affordably. Yeah. So City of Sp Palm Springs has a fee for $200 for a tree, ado a tree of, uh, adoption. And then uh, <coughs> the one I sent you is a fee of 500 but they require bronze plaques. Uh -huh. And they're a little more, you'll read it, but it says they'd like to have, you know, we have a wording requirements, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Right, well, um, yeah, I think New Salem said 250. 250. That's what they do. Which all seems kind of lowball to me, to tell you the truth. When you're talking about, like, in perpetuity, that tree standing there and requiring resources, watering, pruning. I mean, Smith, yeah, Smith, Smith what does Smith call? 5,000. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To take care of it for I mean, that's right or replace it if need be. Yeah. Depending upon what kind of tree it is, that could be just the cost of the tree. Yeah. Never mind anything else. Exactly. Hey, but but it's incremental money and in that we would be doing it anyway. In other words, we're gonna plant the tree, we're just putting their tag on it. So it's not like we, we would, but I would imagine there's a little more of a responsibility in the sense if the tree were to die, then the city is, has to replant that right. tree. Right. Um, versus if it was just a public shade tree that's planted and it died, it wouldn't necessarily be replaced immediately. It would be replaced farther down the road. Yeah. Um, you know, it's sort of like, you're, you, you're basically it's almost a contract. You're entering a contract with a person and you have some responsibility to maintain that contract. Maybe we should put a limit on it to say, look, for the next 50 years, we'll be I mean, forever. That's a, of, that's a lot of time. Yeah, I, I would, absolutely. Um, I would put a limit on it. I, would, yeah. I, I, I also would say you can put in the contract whatever you want, you mm -hmm. know, if the person agrees to it. No one's saying you have to. Yeah. The ones that I investigated um, ranged from 200 up to 1,500 in those three communities here yeah. in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. All right, so you would like to continue working on that. Also, just know that my daughter may in some future point come to the yep. um, committee and... and What's your meeting with Gabby? Friday. Friday, yeah. All right, fall planting. <coughs> well, go ahead, there you can. Okay, I, there are two trees being planted tomorrow. And then... <laughs> Maybe one more after that. So we're basically done. I think we've got to about 130 some trees. I haven't added them all up yet. 230. 230. 230. 230 some trees. Um, plus, plus you got to add the 16 American chestnuts. All right. Yeah. We can do that. We hit our goal. So we yeah. Our goal. Yeah, so we, uh, there we go. That's how you got 250. So we probably did yeah, 50. Um, I, I just want to say that I don't think we met since the South Street planting or the library planting. And so it, we um, met since the South Street, but not since not, the library. Not the library. library. Yeah. So anyway, we, we, South Street went well. Library. I think that the whole planting thing with volunteers working with the EPW, just working 
you know, for my point of view, very smoothly, we're, we're achieving our goals with a little less effort, which is important because a lot of effort. So uh, I was pleased with the library. Uh, there were oh. big trees. Did you ever get that photograph? Can you share that with us, Sue? Was that your oh, phone? I did. You, you said you had other one. I was waiting for you to send. You said you had other one. Oh, yeah. problem and down they took like phone. a week to show up. We had a nice and picture, and up. there's Rob in the back. That <laughs> <laughs> turns you something caught shiny, caught my eye. shiny objects in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems it's, like almost every wrong. picture there's <laughs> one of us who's doing something <laughs> dumb. It was a big group. You but it's a perfect group. You confirm that, though. When the library was. I mean, it was eight trees without a lot of, we were done. No, yeah. we were done like at 11.30. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you guys pre-dug, which helped a lot. Yes. We really did. We dug some material in that courthouse. That guy was just, good. Oh, yeah. He's the title was actually, but the that's soil's so okay. Cool. It's just going to need some amendments to it. Did you say he's going to kill me? What did you say? Will the amendment? The, the, whole, the, whole cam the whole campus. I have to go follow up and work with them. The trustees now because we we crush their lawn basically so I have to mitigate that and uh, we're gonna work with them over the winter to do a, That's hilarious. Uh, a replanting like really plan or IAM plan and uh, I'm trying to convince them to turn the irrigation back on so if they turn the irrigation back on and they do a organic IPM program for the grounds then um, the the trees will be okay I would be concerned if they were to go over there and start using you know, regular synthetic fertilizers and pesticides that would be a little bit of a problem. But they haven't they haven't uh, used the irrigation because they have to pay for the water. It's not free. So it's a big cost. The system hasn't run in a few years. And you, you want it on to support the tree? Yeah, yeah, to help just to help the overall yeah. but to help the overall soil and the soil and the trees that are there. Yeah. But wouldn't just multiple water bags or something? No, the water bags would be fine, but I, I, we, I owe them a little more because of the damage that we did to take the public shade trees down. To fix up the, to fix up the damage that we caused, so I'm going to work with them on a, uh, some kind of a turf program of some sort in my spare time. Did you see the photographs in Cambridge? They're, they're experimenting with having two water bags on each tree. Yep, tied, tied together. Yeah, well, yeah. well but what, one of them actually, they, they put stakes in and they, they put the water bags on the stakes instead of the tree. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of weird. It's a lot of weight, though. On the stakes. Yeah. Yeah, they're, 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 so they put, oh, the stakes aren't like our stakes. They're beefier. They, they put these uh -huh. yeah. dowels into the But ground. that's nice, because, you know, Alan Snow always said he felt like <coughs> the water bags created a moisture trap that worried yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, and I think that for Cambridge, it's partly they've been through these hot cycles, and they're, they plant larger trees. And I'm thinking of the ones we just planted. Where the water bag's kind of not that big in relation to the crisis. Mm -hmm. They're using dual water bags. Mm -hmm. hey, I had the um, director of the library uh, in my group, and um, she was really jazzed about the whole thing. And I had this long discussion with her about um, turf and that they could, you know, plant stuff that was a little more sustainable mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. you know. Down, you know, we had a whole yeah. conversation. I said you're gonna have to commit to, you yeah. know, aeration and maybe a little bit of organic matter. So, I mean, I, I can tell you what I told her. So. Yeah, that's fine. You can. That's where I was thinking the same thing. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to. I was trying to get because after working over there, I'm like, this is like this is soil. The soil is terrible, and this, the trees. You know, we took the trees out this, and we dug. We ended up trying to excavate or trying to drill holes with our. We have that big auger. Wouldn't touch it. Wow. Yeah, we had to dig them all with a backhoe. Wow. We could suck them back. Yeah. Wow, you couldn't use a tree auger? No. Wow. It stopped it. It stopped wow. it dead. Wow. Well, see. Wow. Because you, you dug it. it. Like no. Just no. a hard soil. Just a hard soil. <laughs> so that's how, wow. you know, that's why I think it's, uh, you know, I did, I have soil sand. I took soil samples and I have to send them off to the master in a bucket. So I just haven't done it. I've got to get over there. But wow. I think that's going to be beneficial to whatever they do there. That they're going to have to do some kind of soil amendments of some sort. Was that? It was that way along the whole. Yeah. Well, it has to be air spaded yeah. and amended. Um, the existing trees probably would wouldn't hurt to air spade the existing the large mature trees that are there, but you know I think it's all budgetary numbers right. and trying to. Because I mean, how would the soil get loosened up? That's the only way. The uh, aeration. But you can't really aerate between the trees because there's not enough room, and the aerator would actually damage the 
would damage the existing roots. So you would aerate out the turf area right. to try to loosen that up, and then you would just, based upon what the soil analysis tells you, determine what kind of, you know, you could have two different programs. You have a program that's uh, organic or one that's synthetic. Or organic one would include using organics to modify the soil, you know, to basically then target whatever kind of uh, ground cover you're gonna have on it, whether it's gonna be turf, or whether it's gonna be low maintenance ground cover that would look nice in the front of the library and then have a turf lawn where they actually sit and they actually have their movies and their events, you know? So I think they have, they have some thinking to do with it. They have to have some proposals and I think they just need a little help. So, but. Conway School Landscape Tonight. Hey, there's a project. I don't know, I, I, I yes, they could do that if they'd like. It's possible. Can you can you that that would be more than I've heard they're really well handled. I think oh, they're on the tree. Uh, we did that. Uh, I, someone so pointed a very yeah. building to me. There's oh, really? Yeah, they said they're building a trench. Hospital Hill. Village 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 Nice. Nice We're gonna have to keep our eyes on those little guys because deer do love to browse on those um, leaves. So I, after just one season, we're gonna need to figure out a better way of protecting them. Anyway, that's something down the road. Um, Tree Northampton. Um, Rob has been working a lot with volunteers and Alicia getting just getting trees in the ground planting 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 um, I've been out a bit um, we did kind of a year in review we posted on our website and as Rob mentioned in anticipation of giving Tuesday that gave us a deadline we got up a button on our site we did receive some um, gifts we're very excited about and um, thank yous are going out tomorrow for those people. Pruning yeah. tomorrow. Pardon? There's, uh, the and there's, per also. there's also um, Susan yeah. Roy and Alicia getting the thank you notes out for oh, our right. first wave of gifts. Right. <laughs> um, I don't know the total yet. We'll probably end up with about, I don't know, $500, something like that. that we'll, um, without a, a lot of publicity, but... Um, we will be having we'll be having a planning meeting coming up pretty soon and we'll be putting on some kind of little event like end of the season planting invite people to we're not sure that our people who like to plant would are that psyched about um going somewhere for punch and cookies it's mm -hmm. like trying to think of some other thing we can do with people we have our garden that needs to be put to bed um, very very soon. Is um, there? We'll be in there tomorrow. Oh, you are fantastic. We'll work on that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Right. I wish I had the day off. I'd love to do that. I mean, maybe Sunday again. Maybe two okay, days. tied yeah. it tidied up for the winter. We're thinking Sunday would be the last day we'd work on that. So tomorrow, I'm just giving an example. Tomorrow, there's people working on the garden. There's Rich is meeting with volunteers who are pruning at Village Hill. Mm -hmm. Bob Goffs is participating in that. So, I mean, there's a, the volunteers are very, very, very busy, and Rich is working with them. We have volunteers who signed up through our website who have become very active. They want to plant. They're not as interested in the administrative end. Mm -hmm. We're, um, that is our goal, is to try to identify people who are more interested in that end, sitting down, having a meeting, taking on tasks, um, et cetera. If you know people you know, who are in, who are of that nature um, but also if you are doing your end of your giving think of going to our website it's very easy um, to donate there and um, is it is it PayPal what are we're using PayPal you're using PayPal so if we wrote you a check it would save you the fee yeah, yeah. we yeah checks are always preferred yeah we have an okay. address on the website okay. so we've had that for since we got our 501c3 designation so um, wrapping up a uh, really exciting year, and we have a lot more people involved than we did a year ago. It's very exciting. And How many active volunteers? 
Um, to include all the, all those village hill. And if you want to include the village hill people, and you want to include people who worked on, say, South Street Project, some of them motivated because motivated because it was their neighborhood. I think you're getting up to 100 people who were yeah. done it more than once, even. Yeah. Yeah. So people enjoy it. They have a good time. We try to make it fun mm -hmm. and light and. Um, Nice. All right. Um, any other business? Not anticipated by moi. Oh. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Did I? I, I no, unanticipated business. We had at one time discussed going to once a month. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we, I think, I don't remember what we decided. We put it off for a later date. Yes. I don't know if that later date has not arrived. It has not yet arrived. It, it's the new year. Right, but we, could we discuss whether in the new year we would, I mean, this year we we're having two meetings at two Well, in the new year, we're going to have that conversation. And it is on the agenda for January. Oh, it is? Yeah, yes. January, January 3rd. That's the first one. January 3rd is the first one. Yeah. So it's put on down. the agenda. Yeah. That's all I was asking. Yeah. Is it on? Where yeah. is it? Our next meeting is the 20th of this month. I will not be at that meeting. The 20th or yeah. the 3rd? On the 20th. What, what day of the week is the 20th? Wednesday the 20th, our next meeting? Yep. Wednesday the 20th of December is our next meeting. Actually, let's do a head count there. And then January 3rd is the following meeting, the first one in the new year. So you want... Oh, never mind. Um, so, uh, Tom, did you see your... 20th, check. January, no. January, both the, both those days you're out? What's the second one? It's the 3rd uh, and the 17th. Gone. Both of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, given that you're gone, do you want to give a quick, and I'm not asking anyone else's opinion because we're saving this for, for the third, but since Todd is not going to be there, do you want to give a quick, your feeling about um, continuing to meet once every two weeks or once a month? No pressure. This is like blank face. I'm just going to write down Todd. I'd probably lean towards once a month, mostly just due to time constraints. Okay. All right. You, you, um, Any other? If anyone else wouldn't be here, that Marilyn. Marilyn will be here on the third. I'll be on the third. Yeah, third. Not, but you were asking if who wouldn't be here on the twentieth, and I'm just saying that um, oh. I might not be here. You um, might not. I might not be here. Okay. Jay. So far, it looks good. <laughs> Jen? I'm here for both. Okay. All right. Well, then I think we've got, we've got a, even if Molly wants here, we should have one. Motion, uh, to do recap. Okay, let's or to -do, see. Yes. Rich, the tree city application, and then you mentioned a bunch of tree and stump removal, and then meeting with Alicia tomorrow to finalize the tree guide. Uh, Lily reaching out to Ned's family for the memorial tree, reaching out to Ryan and Donna, requesting that Todd be placed on the meeting agenda for the um, tree calming meeting. Uh, Lily, Molly, myself have a subcommittee meeting tomorrow at Lily's house. Todd attend the traffic calming meeting on the 19th or in January if that's when the next one is. Uh, Jay, Jen, and Rob are working on the Emerald Ash War, with Rob beginning by looking for the ash trees here in Northampton. And uh, let's see, Rob uh, finalized the f last few trees to be planted. And you're working on the contract for the setback trees? The contract exists. It already exists, yeah, okay. I don't think there's anything to do. Nope. There's nothing to do, okay. All right, I'll take nothing that. to do other than sell it. Yes. Door to door salesman. Yes. Door to door. All right, that's fine. <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn this meeting? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.